Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you about working with strings in JavaScript. Now, a lot of times when you're using JavaScript, you're gonna to wanna to work with text, and text can be encoded inside of these literal strings, and then we can use them, we can store them in variables, and we can uh, do different things with them, we can modify them, we can find out information about them. So I wanna show you guys how to work with strings inside of JavaScript. And the most basic string is just uh, two quotation marks and text inside of it. And over here I have this document.write command, and inside I'm passing this string, right? So it's just text inside of uh, quotation marks, and with strings, uh, you can also use a single quotation mark. So instead of just a double one, you can use a single one. It doesn't really matter. Uh, JavaScript doesn't really care. And you can see that this is getting printed out over here on the screen. And strings are really great. A lot of times you're going to want to store information inside of uh, a string form. In addition to just placing a string over here, I could also place this inside of a variable. So I'm going to create a variable up here and we'll just say var phrase is equal to, and now I'm just gonna put in that string. So this is a way that we can store a string value inside of a variable. So now if we wanna access this string, we can just access this variable called phrase. So if I wanted to print this out, I could just put phrase there in that document.write command, and it's gonna stay the same, right? Because we're printing out this same thing. And if I want to access some information about the string, I can just say dot, and then I can type in like the type of information I wanna access. And string has one value we can access, which is called length. So if I just say phrase, which is the name of the string variable, dot length, this is gonna tell me how many characters are inside of this string. So this should print out 16 because this string has 16 characters inside of it. If I was to like change the length of the string, then the length is gonna be modified as well. So using the length of a string can be really useful in JavaScript. There's a lot of circumstances where you're gonna to wanna to figure out like how long a particular string is. In addition to accessing the length, we can also use things called methods on strings. And a method is essentially like a little snippet of code that we can call, which will perform certain operations on our strings. And there's a bunch of these different methods and they'll do different things for us. They'll either like modify our string or they'll give us specific information about our string. And methods are really cool, and there's a bunch of these different methods that we can use with strings. And the way we access a method is similar to accessing this length attribute, we can say dot, and then I wanna type in the name of the method that I want to access. And one of the most basic uh, methods inside of JavaScript for strings is converting a string to upper or lower case. So we can say, basically just type out the name of the method we wanna access, and there's one called to, uppercase. And when I'm using a method, I want to use these open and close parentheses after. So I'm typing out this dot, the name of the method that I want to use, in our case, to uppercase, and then these open and close parentheses. And so what will happen now is this string will get printed out, but instead of just printing out normally, it'll print out uppercase. So now you see it's entirely uppercase. And that's because this method is basically taking the string, it's taking this phrase string, it's converting it to uppercase, and then that whole thing is getting printed out. I could also use lowercase, so we could say to lowercase, and that's gonna do exactly what you think. It's gonna convert everything to lowercase. But with these methods, you can also give them specific information. So you can give these methods information, and then with that information, they can give you different things, or they can do different things. So there's another method here called char at and basically what this will do is we can pass this a number so we can put inside of these parentheses a number and a lot of times people will call this a parameter so you'll say we can pass this method a parameter basically we're just giving it some information so we can give this char at method a, a number and basically what it'll do it'll, is it'll return the character at that specific index in the string so if i was to give this a one uh, you might think that that will give us the character at the first position in the string. So if I save this, you're, you're probably thinking, okay, this will give us this S. But actually what it's gonna do is it's gonna give us a T. If I was to give this a two, you might think, well, two should give us the T, right? Because it's one, two, but actually this is gonna give us that R. So this is returning a character at a specific index, but it seems to be returning the wrong character. And this kind of brings us to a core concept 
with strings in JavaScript, which is indexes. And down here, I have this little index chart here, and I wanna show you guys this. Um, I'm just gonna uncomment this really quick. When we're dealing with strings in JavaScript, and specifically when we're dealing with the indexes of those strings, JavaScript starts counting the letters of the string from zero. So if I was to ask you like count out the letters inside of this string, you might say, well, here's one, two, three, four. But when JavaScript indexes a string, when JavaScript counts out the characters in a string, it starts with zero. So it says zero, one, two, three, four. So if I'm using JavaScript and I ask JavaScript to give me the first character in the string, instead of giving me this A, it's gonna give me this one. If I ask JavaScript to give me the zeroth character in the string, it's gonna give me the A. So that's kind of like uh, a little bit of a idiosyncrasy with JavaScript. And it's actually the same with most programming languages as they start their indexes from zero. So they start counting from zero. So that's just something to uh, keep in mind when you're using your JavaScript. So we can actually come back over to this char at, and now you'll know like what index you need to pass. So if I pass a zero into here, now it should return that S, right? If I pass a three into here, it's gonna give me zero, one, two, three. It's gonna give me this I. So that's how you can use that character at function in order to get specific characters at specific indexes. You can also use another method, which is kind of like the opposite of this. So I could say uh, index of, and now instead of passing this a number, I wanna pass this a letter. And what this will do is it'll tell me the index of that letter inside of this string. So if I pass this an S, actually we'll make it a capital S. This should return zero because S is at the zeroth location in the string. If I pass this an R, this should return zero, one, two. It should return two because R is at the second index. That's exactly what it does. So you can use this index of method to figure out where specific characters are inside of your string. And what this will do is it'll give you the index of the first one. So for example, I have two O's up here in the word cool. This is gonna give me the index of this first O. And you can see it's 13. There's also another method which is similar but it's last index of and so this should return the last index of something so this will return instead of 13 it'll return 14 so it'll return the last index of a given thing and if in here if you pass a character that's not in the string so for example if i pass this as z this is going to give me a negative one so it'll give you a negative one if the character isn't in the current string so that's the basics of uh, indexes with strings and then also using that char at and that index of function. Those are gonna be really useful um, when you're writing your JavaScript and working with strings. There's also another really cool method which is called substring. And this is a method which is, uh, you can just type it out like this, substring. And instead of just taking one input, instead of taking one parameter, this is actually gonna take two parameters. And the first parameter is gonna be a number, and this is gonna be the index that we wanna start at. So substring is basically gonna take uh, a section of your string, so like one part of the string and print it out. And we can define which part of the string we want substring to print out. And the first thing is gonna be the starting index. So where do we wanna start uh, grabbing this string? So I can say zero, and this will just start grabbing the string here. And then I can pass this another parameter. And to do that, I'm just gonna type a comma, and now I can put in the other parameter that I want to pass in. And this is gonna be the index where we wanna stop grabbing the string. So if I said, for example, three, this will grab the string from zero up to three. And it's actually not gonna include this third index. So substring is gonna grab zero, one, two, and it's gonna stop when it gets to three. So it's not gonna grab this I, it's just gonna grab str. So over here, you'll see we're just having str. So I could change this. If I wanted, I could start this at like four and I could grab all the way up to nine, but again, not including the ninth character and it'll you know grab all of that. So you can use substring to grab a specific part of a string. 
And you can also use these methods together. So if I wanted inside of this substring method, I could actually pass it the result of another method. So what I could say is, let's say that I wanted to grab this cool word right here, right? So I wanted to grab only this word from the string. What I could do is I could pass in, instead of just passing in numbers, I could pass in the results of other methods. So I could say here, we want to start grabbing this at this C character. So what I could say is I could say phrase dot index of C. And remember, phrase dot index of C is going to return the location of the first C in the string, which is this C inside of cool. And then over here, I want to grab this all the way up till the end of the string. So I can say phrase dot length. And now what this will do is it'll grab the string from C all the way to the end of the string. And so you'll see here now we just get this word cool. And so you can use that with a bunch of these different things. So if I wanted to grab, for example, R cool instead of just cool, I could come over here and change this from a C to an A and now it'll grab R cool. So you can use these methods inside of other methods. Like I can pass the result of a particular method into another method as a parameter and you can do cool things like that. There's also another really cool method which I wanna show you guys and it's called ends with. So this is an example where a method will give us a Boolean value. So I can say phrase dot ends with and in here I can just pass a string. And so what I can do is this will, I can give this a value and it'll tell me whether or not the string ends with that value. So if I uh, was to type in here, cool, this is gonna return true. So we're gonna get a value of true back because the string ends with cool. But if I returned cools like that, this should give us false because the string doesn't end with that. There's also another one which is similar to this, which is includes. And basically we're doing the same thing. So I can pass in a string and it'll tell me if that string is inside of a uh, phrase. So I could say like uh, strings, and this should return true. So I could also include like another variable. So if I made a variable here and we'll just call it text and I set it equal to R cool, what I could do then is I could pass in this text variable as a parameter. So I could say text and this should return true because R cool is included in this string. So you can, you know, you can really like mix and match these different things, but really the core concept is that we're using a method, which we use by dot and then the name of the method on this string. We can pass this method specific information and using that information, it'll be able to give us specific values back. So it'll be able to return to us uh, different information or different values. In this case, it's returning a true or a false value. In other cases, it returns a number. In other cases, it just returns another string. And so these can be really flexible. Another thing I wanna show you guys is how you can concatenate strings. And concatenation is basically the process of taking a string and appending another string onto it. And this is really simple. So what I could do is I could take this phrase and I could combine it with text. And I can do that with a plus sign. So I can just say phrase, plus text and JavaScript will know that we want to concatenate these two strings together. So you'll see now over here, we just get these two strings together and you'll see like this is looking a little weird because there's not a space here. So if I added a space um, here, then this will look a little bit better. Another thing I can do is just put in actual text. So if I got rid of this space, instead I could add in another string into here. So I could just put an actual space and now we'll have that same space over here. So you can combine variables with like strings using this plus sign. And obviously you need a plus sign on either side of the string. So I wanna point you guys to a resource. Uh, this is w3schools.com. And if you just type in JavaScript string reference w3schools into Google, this will pop up. And this is a page that has basically just a listing of all of the methods that you can use with these strings. So you can see a couple of these we used in this lesson, but there's a bunch of them here. So what you wanna do is just really practice playing around with these strings. And you can do exactly what I did, which is just you know practice printing out different strings and using different methods. Um, and you can get a listing of them from this website, or there's also a bunch of other websites that will list them out. So that's the basics of strings. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you're able to leverage strings inside of your JavaScript.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.